So OpenAI just released a new Responses API. So uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about it and I'm going to build something using it from scratch, from zero. Uh, so just to help you out, just get started with it. I think this is awesome because the chat completion API was showing a little bit of age already. Uh, I mean, chat completions was, is great, it's still available. You can still use it, obviously. And one of the reasons is, is so good is because everyone else adopted the same API. So that means that if you want to change models, uh, you didn't have to change your code. You could be hitting the same endpoints and the new model would just work. And I hope the same thing will happen with this new responses API, which is much better than chat completions again. Um, so I'm very excited about that. I decided to just build something that I actually, I have to do constantly have to do anyway. I teach a class, I have a PDF document for each one of my sessions. And I'm constantly improving those sessions and a good way of improving those sessions is to just upload the PDF to ChatGPT and start asking questions about that PDF. So, uh, you know, obviously ChatGPT is not the best way to do that. It's much better if I can do that from code and I can keep asking questions and refining uh, my PDFs that way. So that is exactly what I'm planning to build right now. By the way, if you go to the documentation, it's all of it right now is the responses API and you will know that because you will see something like this. It says client that responses that create. And again, I don't want to get into the comparison, but if you if you've used this before and you've used the chat completions API before, you will notice that the responses API is is way more concise. Like you get to the point really really quick. It's not that chatty. It's not that verbose. You don't have to type a lot of stuff. The other thing that's really great is the way it handles responses and the way it provides the text back. The chat completion API, you have to sort of like navigate the response from the model. Like you have to traverse the, you know, like an array of JSONs just to get the final answer. It was just very, very complicated. This makes it uh, much cleaner to just get access to the actual text. Uh, the quick start page in the platform.openai.com uh, website uh, has a bunch of different examples, uh, just how to build agents and how to use tools, very important. Let me show you the tools part because that, I think that was great. Well, if I can find it now, let me see, there is function calling here. Uh, Okay, so I'm not sure it was function calling the one that I saw though. There is one that we will find probably built-in tools. Okay, so this is the one. This is super cool, all right? So now we can call the responses API and we can provide built-in tools. So these are tools that are uh, provided directly by ChatGPT. These are not just your custom tools but tools that ChatGPT or OpenAI provides. Like in this case here, uh, they're using the web search, apparently it's in preview mode, and they're asking what was a positive news story from today? Okay, so let me start. I'm gonna start building with this example so you see it in action. And then I'm gonna just go and move into building the, the PDF. Uh, if you're trying to start building with AI, this might be a good thing for you to look at. If you know how to use these models, then just, just don't bother with this because I'm gonna be starting from scratch, from nothing. So I have a project here, it's empty. The only thing I have is a .env file. Uh, and I'm gonna show you here, this is an OpenAI key that I added here, the OpenAI API key. Obviously, I'm going to deactivate this key before posting this video. Uh, but here's what I add my key. I make sure that file never makes it to GitHub. And the, you know, in order to do that, I just created that git ignore file. If I can type git ignore, and then inside that git ignore, I just type the name of the file. And whenever I'm ready to post, 
to GitHub, this .m file will never make it to GitHub. So my key will not be shared publicly, okay? So now that I'm here, I use UV in order to manage my environment. If you're not using UV, just please stop the video right now. Go search it up, install it, stop using PIP, stop using virtual environments, stop using poetry, stop using all of that crap, okay? UV is the one. So I'm gonna initialize my repo, UV in it. That will create a bunch of files for me. Uh, it's gonna create a Python version. So I'm gonna be using 3.13. It's gonna create a pyproject.toml file, which will include all of the dependencies. It's going to create a readme file. Right now it's empty. And it also created a hello.py file, which is gonna be the main entry point, okay? So things that I need to install, I'm gonna add to the, the OpenAI API. Uh, so I'm gonna add that and that's it. If you notice when I do UV at OpenAI, that will automatically modify my pyproject.toml and will add OpenAI right here with the version that it needs to uh, be here. All right, so that's cool. I know that I'm gonna be reading this environment variable. Uh, to do that, I'm gonna add another variable, uh, another library. That's the python.f.env library. So by adding that library, I can now come to the hello file. I'm gonna import, I think it's .env, uh, actually it's from .f, there we go. So something like this. So I'm gonna import load.env and I'm gonna call it, and that will make that variable available for me. I'm gonna import OS here, and I'm gonna do something like print, open AI API key just to make sure it's available. So I can run this application by saying UV run Python hello.py and that it's printing my environment variable. So it's available, that's cool, that's awesome. I don't need this, so I'm gonna just get rid of it and I'm gonna just type pass right here. So, all right, so I think I'm ready to start with the example, so I'm gonna come here, grab this code. I just selected Python. Obviously you have examples with Coral and JavaScript as well. I selected Python. So I'm gonna come here and do this. Uh, let's move this down. Okay, so from OpenAI, import OpenAI, it's creating a client application. Uh, I'm gonna load the environment before because this client application requires the environment variable to be ready. I'm gonna actually add it down here. It's much better. And then there is this response, which I'm gonna add right here. Sorry about the mess, making a mess here by trying to reformat the code. And this also is gonna come right here. All right, so that looks good. Let's try to understand what's happening here. Oh, what happened? What did I do? Okay, let's try to understand what's happening. I'm creating a client, and that client is the one that's gonna allow me to use the responses API. I don't need to specify the OpenAI API key because this class is gonna read it directly from the environment. That's why this is very important. If I don't include this line, then it's not gonna work. Uh, then the responses here, I'm gonna create one response, the model will be GPT-40. The type of message or the type of tool is gonna be a web search preview. And what was the positive news stories from today? Let's just give this a try and see what happens. I'm gonna rerun my application and let's see if that works. Obviously the model doesn't know anything about today. So let's see, oh, look at, look at this. <laughs> Uh, Brightline recognized for social good innovation. Brightline, the high-speed rail service in Florida. I live in Florida, so I'm guessing that's why. Miami Beach ranked number two best party city in the US. Is this from today though? Let's see. I'm gonna go here. I don't know if this is... So news, maybe? 
Okay. Spring Break 2025 ranks three Florida cities among the best for partying in the U.S. What is number two? Okay, can somebody just give me a list? Okay, this is stupid. I don't know. I'm gonna hope that that is working. I don't know if he's actually searching. I hope he's searching. Why wouldn't he search? So let me see. Okay, so here's the thing. Who is... Let's just ask about me. I don't think these models know about me, but if they search, they will find information about me. So let's give it a try. Yeah, that's who I am, I guess. That's awesome. So I'm going to assume this is working anyway. The point of me showing you this is that this new tools thing, pretty good, right? So adding tools like this is just pretty little amount of code that you can do here before it was very, very complicated, not that clear. Anyway, this is awesome. But what I really, really want to build is that little tool to read this PDF and answer questions about PDF. And this is just one of the sessions. Uh, this should be enough for me to just give this a try. Uh, so I'm going to close this and I'm going to go to the responses API and there is a file inputs here section. And here is one example where we can upload the file and ask questions about the file. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it over here. We're going to move things around. Uh, so this is what I'm going to do. So these two lines. All right. So I don't need any of this. This is to create a file. This is important. So I'm going to get rid of that section and I'm going to add it over here. So, okay. So, uh, okay. Let me format this. Let me add a line. Okay. So now this is going to upload a file and cursor here wants me to change the name of the file. Uh, yes, change the name of the file. The file is going to be session1.pdf, and we are going to be uploading it as user data. In the documentation of OpenAI, they say that anytime you want to ask questions about a PDF, just say that the purpose is user data. They don't explain why, but they recommend you do that. They said you can use any purpose, but please just use user data. Not sure why that's the case. But anyway, this is what we have. I'm uploading a file now. And now what I need to do is I need to ask questions about that file. And in order to do that, I'm going to just create a function. It's going to be called get answer or ask question, whatever, or get answer. Get answer uh, to a question. I'm going to need to pass the client here and I'm going to need to pass the file because the file is just the file that we just uploaded. We want to upload the file only once, obviously. So now I can just do this. And this is going to be response that I'm going to be getting back. The role is going to be user. OK, I'm passing role user. And the content that's going to go with that, with this question, is going to be the file.id. And then here I have the question, which I'm going to replace by the parameter here. OK, and then obviously I need to return the response. OK, I'm going to delete this. So I have my function get answer and I'm going to give this a try first. So I'm just going to get rid of all of this. I don't need any of that. So let me just do this. Get answer. I'm going to pass the client. I'm going to pass the file and I'm going to pass a question. What is problem framing? Yeah, that, that's a good question. Uh, let's open the file and let's just go to common causes of selection bias. So let me just copy this. What are the common causes of selection bias listed in the file, in the document? Okay. So that's a good question. And now I can just go and run my hello application. And hopefully, 
we will get a good answer back. So the first time this loads, uh, obviously we're gonna be loading that file, hopefully only one time. And then after that, I can just keep asking questions and that should do it. The file is, is big. The common causes of selection bias listed, listed are time, location, demographics, response bias, and availability bias. If we go to the document, common causes of selection bias are time, location, demographics, response bias, and availability bias. So it nailed it. It's definitely reading the document. So the only thing that's left for me is just to do this in a loop and just basically add the ability for me to ask questions. So look at this, Cursor even knows what I, what I, what I want to do. So enter question, uh, if question load, I don't need this. And then I'm going to do, I'm going to print the answer from the question and that's pretty much it. So this is all that I need just to make this work. Uh, let's see if that is true. Just gonna run this. I'm gonna find another slide and maybe ask something different. Better data is better than, okay. So I'm gonna say, complete the phrase. Better data is better than, well, hopefully, I don't know what it's going to do. Maybe it doesn't use the document. Hopefully it uses the document to answer that question. We'll see. If not, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to just add that. Better data is better than better models. Yes, it did that. So why is this helpful for me now? It's just pretty bare bones. Well, because now with one specific session, I can start asking questions that are, hey, are there any grammatical mistakes or suggestions about the text. Please give me this slide number. Okay, so I can start asking questions like this and it's pretty easy for me to, to work with multiple files. It's pretty easy for me to just interact with this PDF document and that's it. So here it says slide number six, consider Focus on understanding, framing the problem, collection data, labeling, and prototyping. Okay, so if I go to slide number six, let's make sure this works. One, two, three, four, five, uh, six. So it says start a project with a discovery phase, focus on understanding and framing the problem, data collection, labeling, and an initial prototype. So it's telling me to change the phrase here. I can ask follow-up questions, like what do you think this is best or why not? Anyway, it's a very, very simple way to build something, not using any extra third-party tools. I don't need something like Langchain or Llama Index to do this. Uh, the Responses API makes it way easier to build. And I think it's pretty good. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you can put this for good use. Keep building good applications and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.